Good evening! Here's Europe at Eye Level Live broadcasting from Aachen, Western Germany, but Europe. It's our first live video. I have uh, two guests. And before you can see that we already have Grünwein wine, or Betty said it's called malt wine. Yep. So, um, these are we three. My name is Friedrich. I'm from the team Europe at Eye Level. We like to discuss with you this evening. But before I want to introduce uh, the rest of uh, the team, it's Kai on the left side um, and Benny. I think these guys are popular at IG, <laughs> at the IG members in Europe. So and behind uh, the technique is Philip, um, and Philip is a little bit ill. So let's greet Philip also from here. But first of all, I hope we have the first uh, guys live uh, listening and watching us. So where are you guys from? Where are you watching? What are you doing right now until we're waiting for the rest of you to discuss with us? Philip, do we have the first comments, the first reactions about our topic? The topic today is the youth in politics in Europe, so for example, we would like to discuss about the age of going to, to the vote, uh, about the age in the parliaments, and if you have some sources in for your country, how old are the parliamentarians in your country, uh, who is the youngest, who is the famous, for example, Mr. Kurz in Austria, I think he's the youngest um, minister president ever, and um, so until we're waiting, let's start with a short introduction. I think, Benny, some words about you and your opinion to youth in Europe. Um, yes, my name is Benny. I'm from Aachen here, and I'm active in parts of Europe and in IG for a long time, so I'm a European, I could say. Um, youth in politics, I would say we don't have a lot of young people in politics, but on the other hand, I think it's also kind of normal because if you are young, you have different stuff you want to do, uh, you have a lot of stuff to learn, and in a way, it's also not bad that people go into politics when they are a bit um, experienced, I would say. Yeah, hello, my name is Kai. I'm also at IG for a lot of years and active in a lot of European projects. Um, I think that I will also have a Similar point of view because I'm also from Aachen. I'm also in a similar age as the others, and we have, we yeah, we see that there are not enough uh, young people active in politics, at least from our point of view. Um, and I think we have to discuss how we could change that, if we could change that, and what would be the results of changing it. So maybe one question to our uh, visitors and you watching us: Are you? in a party, in a politic party, how old are you and are you organized in politics or are you just interested or whatever not, so you're just making studies or making party. We would like to know more about you also and how we can make the things a little bit better because <clears throat> I'll start with the thesis that um, we are not heard uh, as a youth, so we are about the age of 30, so we are pretty old, but um, I think there, uh, the, um, the cut of ages is about 50 or over, and a lot of uh, young people are not re represented uh, by voice or by um, their, their opinion in the parliaments. I just prepared uh, the German Bundestag, um, there are just a few from about 650 parliamentarians who are under 31. So there are two um, members in the Bundestag which are from the SPD, from the Social Democrats. There are five from the Liberals, from the FDP. There's one from the left, from Die Linke. There are two from the uh, CDU, from the, the Christian Union and from the sister party, from the CSU, from Bavaria, it's four. And there are six uh, members, which are under 31, which are belonging to the uh, AFD. Mm -hmm. I think it's... <laughs> that sounds kind of worrying, because it seems like all the new... If there's a new party with a new idea, they also get some young people into them. That shows that, but also 
uh, not to forget that under 30, uh, being in Parliament is quite an achievement. You need a lot of money, you need a lot of time. If you don't have that, you anyways will not manage to get into it. It doesn't mean that maybe your, um, your opinion may not be heard. Maybe your parents, your, maybe your parent is an MEP, and so the voice can be heard anyways, I think. I would maybe raise also another problem that we have here. I always see nowadays that we have a problem that politicians most likely didn't have a normal work life less like other people. So that's why we are also under, uh, underrepresenting groups and normal people in the beginning of their work life. Um, so maybe it's also a problem for people that have totally no, no work experience um, yeah, to bring a good reason to the voters to represent them in the parliament. Well, and what it also shows it is that, I mean, even if you are young, it doesn't mean you have good or nice ideas, or ideas I would agree with. If five people are in AFD, or Mr. Kurz from Austria is under 30, it doesn't mean he has good politics. So youth cannot be an answer about this, it's just a general society thing. So, one point is that it is quite good that there are experienced politicians, but how could we match them or mix them up that the interests and the topics of young people are represented because I think for example the digital topics um, for example to have a digital commissioner Mr. Oettinger I think this was pretty funny um, because I don't think he's a bad commissioner in Europe what you heard about his work in Europe is better than it it was in, in, uh, in Baden Württemberg in Germany, but I think a guy who is that bad in English and also from the knowledge, maybe this should be more by youth. <laughs> uh, at least it should ha uh, be. Uh, it should be more about qualification than about your connections in some parties or certain. I don't know what made him to come go to Europe, but we can guess. Uh, yeah, I think it should be more about qualification, not about some contacts that you have. So, um, question for you. Um, let's let's show the viewers also what we are seeing here. Um, there is seventy-three percent of the world's countries doesn't allow people that are eighteen to even run for an office. So, do you really think it is because people don't want to run for anything, or? Um, is it also a change that has to be made in the system? Should an 18-year-old become Bundeskanzler? Or is it young? Or is it young to become a parliamentarian? To be honest, I think it's, uh, it shouldn't be on, on us, it shouldn't be on the voters. If people really want to vote for somebody who is 18, to go for an office, why not? It's not, it's not the decision of, of the make people that make the law to prevent young people to go to offices. Of course, a lot of people will maybe not vote for 18 year old to be president or yeah, prime minister of a country because it means maybe to be very experienced, to have good uh, reputation, have also good connections. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that the voters are not allowed to vote for somebody. I think it's totally stupid to forbid it. It's maybe, if, if people want to vote it, it's okay for me. I think it's, there shouldn't be. No, we, we, people from 18 are allowed to, uh, in most countries, to do nearly everything. So most, most stuff is legal in most of the countries. Why shouldn't they be able to make decisions for their citizens? But it's under 18, right? So it's at voting age. Right? Yeah. Voting age should be office age. Cool. So I, I think <clears throat> you, you can make differences there. Because I think a prime minister or a kind of... Uh, uh, the head of uh, everything should be have more experience because the job of a chancellor or prime minister is also to, to be a kind of manager of the government, for example. But within the government or within the representatives at the government, I think there are a lot of people changing their positions or their, uh, their jobs which are in politics and maybe they are switching from the financial minister, uh, ministerium to the maybe education or to the uh, military or whatever. But I think the, the committees, for example, um, 
should be mixed up with more uh, younger people, which are in job, for example. Like we have in in, uh, in cities, for example, if you have a, a capital or a small city, there's also the government, and they have uh, uh, more younger people in their parliaments, and also it's called uh, knowledge civilians, for example. People with knowledge, and they don't need to be voted, but they can participate. This is... Uh, in small um, things possible, but not when it's getting bigger, for example. And I think <clears throat> that this could be a possibility. And also I think a lot of people um, are holding on their power, so they're not giving new or younger people a chance to to be equal. Well, I think, well, why, why should young people be equal in every way? It's, it's, it's a matter of life that you have to go through certain stages. Like you cannot drive under 18, you should not drink too much alcohol under 18. And uh, that's just another step. So it's, I think in that way it's not a big deal. And if they are hurt at um, this, is, if they are consulted by the politicians, it may have even an even better effect, like you say, in the meetings or this council things. I cannot really support this, because I think when majority of the citizens in the country want to have an 18-year-old as prime minister and vote for him, why shouldn't he? Yeah, but why shouldn't The parliament and the politicians are representing the citizens, so we shouldn't prevent that by law. We have minimum age, because in a different, yeah, for children, we, we say that children are not responsible for themselves fully, so we protect them also against um, against law, for example, and against a lot of other stuff, because we don't give them like the yeah we don't think that they have enough experience to take care about everything themselves. But when we say they are adult enough, adult enough to do everything about that, I think we can also let them do whatever they want if they get enough support. So I really think we don't need any age limit there. That's Hawaii. Could there be a, <coughs> a better mixture to say um, or to add, okay, we um, change the age of um, um, the voting age to say, okay, if you can vote with 16, you are um, more interested maybe in politics because you are allowed to vote. Is this maybe a reason because if you are 18, you're allowed to vote, maybe you need some years to get in touch, to, to interest yourself. But if you're 16, maybe with the age of 18 or 20, you're maybe more close to politics? Mm, I'm skeptical. I think there are some countries who tried that, or some local elections where they could do that, but I'm not, in, I'm not really informed about this. Maybe, maybe we can find some uh, information about this in the background. Yeah, but I remember that even in my school days, there was this discussion if people should vote with 16. So that's some years ago. I think we have. We have uh, some uh, local countries in Germany where you can vote with the age of 16, but not in all of our, our uh, countries. So uh, this is also, I think, a little bit very interesting because in some uh, countries there is a possibility. But that's federal system. Great. So are there any reactions of uh, our uh, visitors where they are um, or where they are located and where there are voting uh, ages. So, <laughs> I think so, and of course we have. So we spread the word and we yeah, have... Yeah, it's all already that Alex is online. Yes, because <laughs> oh, you, you can't see that because we have a new uh, guest arrived here. He will join us in a few minutes when he finished his Asian food. So uh, I love Asian we'll, food. We will work on it later. So, um, no, but actually, um, <laughs> we continue. Independent from um, the law we have, to, to, even if you are allowed to get in office with 18, you still have to find enough people supporting you. And just the people at, from 18 wouldn't be enough. So you anyhow need to convince people with your opinion, with your, with your ideas, and with people's support, yeah, so with your character. So I think it, it wouldn't change anything. When we would allow 18-year-old to go in any office, it wouldn't make all offices full of 18-year-old people, because it's not what majority of the citizens want. Especially in a country like Germany, where the average age of people is 
I don't know exactly, maybe you know better, but it could be nearly to 40, something like that. The average age? The average age in Germany. I think it's higher. It's higher. Yeah, it's even higher, maybe. That's so, uh, the, the changing of law wouldn't really like change the parliament to a very young parliament where just unexperienced newbies would make decisions. It would be a, maybe a better mixture with some more young people, but also some experienced people and maybe some less of the people that are so old that I don't even trust them to make decisions anymore. Philip, you have something for us. Yes, so um, about the, the voting age, for example, Austria it's 16 years as well as Brazil, while the majority of the world has 18 as a voting age. Um, 18 is pretty much the standard age to become an adult in our society, to drive, to drink, and so on. But it's it's not the same. I mean, in America, you can drive at 16 and drink at 21, so but not at 18. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's very different in that aspect. There's Saudi Arabia, where you can vote at 21, and uh, Sudan, where you can vote at 6, 17. Um, maybe a question... Should voting be uh, compulsory for citizens? For yeah. example, Belgium, Australia, they have compulsory voting systems. Um, because there is, um, at least according to this website, in Brazil, it's voluntary between 16 and 18 and over 70. And yeah. Which means that it's obligatory. I think so. I, I actually love the idea because I think somebody that don't want this water party can still go to voting and then you can make no trust on the voting ballot. That's actually in Belgium. You have to show up. You don't have to vote. Because you have I think to show it's up. a really shitty reason to don't vote because you're too lazy to vote up yeah. or you didn't care about it. I think it's a really interesting idea. We should try it in maybe some German state or maybe later than in the whole country and see what happens. But to be honest, I think we don't do it because whatever you make for law, something obligatory, you also need people to control it. We already know that going to school is obligatory and there's big problems to bringing people to school that don't want to go. And so um, we would raise also like a, a lot of impact to courts and to police and to everything to control this stuff. You would, you would have to look at Belgium or some uh, other states where how it works there, I would say. I support this idea too because <clears throat> if you just have to show up and you also have the possibility to vote by, by uh, post, for example, um, so you, you still have the chance to show up if you are dissatisfied, if you are not agreeing with any party. But there is a more clear picture of the interest, um, because I think the biggest group in nearly every European country, in Germany it's for, for sure, is that the non-voters are the biggest group. And also, this was um, the problem, uh, for example, I think, with the Brexit in the, the referendum in Great Britain. That was. Um, because um, there are, I think, merging two, I think, big problems. The first one is that a lot of people who not voted. And the second is that there was a so essential vote, um, and the result was so close, and 2% uh, have a so big um, consequence impact, yeah, or impact. Question. And also, one advantage is that it strengthens uh, the sense that it's your fucking duty to go and vote, and it's, it's your government. Yeah, it's your contribution. It's your government. Um, I know some people that say I don't care. Um, so, so we will we will make a little space for Alex. And, whoa, uh, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> no, I think someone will win. <coughs> so nothing okay. happened. Nothing. So, with just a short break, you can also refill your glue wine. We will do this too. Philip always sitting great. Philip, how's the glue wine doing? It's warm it's awesome. and beautiful. Good. Now everything is in the view. Water. It's working. Just. I'm just sick, so I only have water, but it's okay for me. So we also need a quote for people who are drinking good wine. Yeah. So, we have Alex. Yes. Welcome, Alex. He's also a new member of uh, European Eye Level. I hope uh, 
you had a good way to hear to come to us. <laughs> this is yeah, the result of proven. <laughs> Not the so Alex, how are you? Introduce yourself in short sentence. Okay. I'm Alex, and I'm pretty new to IJ and Europe at eye level. And yeah, I love doing videos, so that's why Friedrich came to me and said, Do you want to join? And I was. You want to join? Later. <laughs> no, I don't want to join. I like to join it. Come on. So, Alex, what's your opinion uh, about uh, the rep um, representative of young people in Europe in the politics? Yeah, I think it's a good idea to like to have more young people like contributing in government and society and all this stuff. But um, we had the discussion that you need to be at least 18. Uh, no, no, older to go for office. For, for office, exactly. Yeah, we just discussed that. We yeah. have different opinions on it. I'm. I have the opinion that you should be a bit older than 18 uh, to take an office just to have a bit of life experience, like, um, you know, uh, when you do your driver's license for motorbike, uh, like, is it the, the right word? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, you get, you get the idea. So, uh, you can do, do it with 25. No, you can do it with 18. Yeah, but, but not the, the full one, the, the big one for all. Yeah, but if you do this 18, vehicles. two years after you have it, yes. Yeah, and then, yeah, <coughs> the thing is, like, the point is that you need a bit more experience to and get yeah, used to, to bigger vehicles. Yeah, and there's a big difference. Yeah, but, but you, you can't throw somebody in who's just 18 and has no idea what he's doing into a an, an big position, an important position. And yeah. But Alex, yeah. you can decide to buy a motorbike to make a driving license and drive yourself. That's why the state has to protect you against something. But if you if you run for an office, you have to decide to run for an office, and you have to convince enough people to vote for you. It's not like you, I want to be president, and then you are the random elected president of Germany, and, and I am an important management position without any experience. If you cannot convince enough people that you would do this job great, then nobody would vote for you, and in the end you wouldn't be president. That means we have a like, safety net here that is protecting idiots. But we don't have that much people who are really... Uh, attending uh, positions or offices. But that's a different topic. We, we, we have two topics. We can discuss first what should be the, the rules for it, and then we can discuss it. It doesn't matter which rules we have. We have a problem that people are underrepresented. But that's not only connected to the rules, it's also because not enough people are active in politics. This is, I think, the step that's before. The I think like we have this voting age discussion, like I said, for 20, 30 years, and it doesn't really change anything, and it doesn't really matter, as we see in your argument. So basically, we should just leave it out of the discussion and care about more important stuff. Yeah, we should motivate people to get active for their opinion, to build their own opinion, to take part of political decision making, and I think the step of taking part is discuss with people, if you decide for a party, you can go to political parties, there's no limit for that, and uh, to, to raise your voice. You know? And then you can get experience, you can convince people, and you can get an office. And if you, if you, raise, if you go to a party with, with 14, and with 20, you have six years of experience, and they vote for you as a, their main candidate, then it's okay. It's a decision, from my point of view. So what we should do is, like, maybe motivate people more to get politically active. So maybe change something about uh, school. Well, politics in school is a very dry topic. Dry topic is totally wrong in English, I know. <laughs> but um, it's, a, it's a topic where you learn about numbers and about a lot of facts, but you, you never learn about possibilities, about ideas. You normally learn about the history. No, I learn about the system. Yeah. I think this depends mainly on school and teachers a little bit, but I think there shouldn't. Uh, a second point, it may, maybe it's the education, I'm not sure about that exactly. Sometimes I would say yes, but sometimes I think that people are educated, they, they know the basics, but I think they don't see why it's, they, it's needed to be active because, hey, I have money, my parents have money, I, I can study, I can go for work, 
I have my mobile phone, I can do it, I can travel. So maybe it's because they, they <coughs> feel too safe, they don't see or uh, they don't need to. So, to you, so you want them to feel unsafe? <laughs> <laughs> But then it's a decision. If you don't want to be active and you don't want to, be, oh, then you have to live with the, with the results the other spring. So at the moment, the average politician is like 60. I think I, I, I joined the local political organization, what's the youngest in Moscow, Estonia, with like average age from 43 or something. Yeah? Um, but if the young people don't go to be active, I think that it's our fault. So if I don't be active, then I have to live with what the others decide. So uh, you joined now, Kai. How old are you now? I'm 36. So um, if you were 18, would you actually join uh, the party you joined now, or would you join the youth party? Because in Germany we have the system that we have uh, a youth po youth organization that is the uh, youth party linked to the party? Oh, actually, is this, is this actually, how it's going? No, it's not really how it works. The, the youth party is a part of the party. You are a member of the normal party and you are a member of a working committee for youth and that's what a youth party is. It's not really a youth party. Right. You don't uh, have to be in this youth part of the party. This is the, the so better... Uh, you are anyhow a member of the party. You can just be active in the working group of young people but you can also directly go to the But do you think it's it's a good system to exclude the young people in a separate structure, even no, if it's not, within the structure? That's what I said. They are not accepted. You can it's just true. become excluded. You can just become a member of a political party. In this party, you decide to be active in this youth group, but you are still a member of the regular party. You can also go to every decision making of the regular party. I think we have a very actual example for that. If you have a look at today's talks in politics where the Social Democrats in Germany and the uh, Union Party um, said, okay, we can imagine to build up the new uh, government and the youth part of the Social Democrats is against a new uh, coalition between the big uh, parties. So I think they can see that there is the possibility of a youth impact, but you have also to say that the young organization of the Parties is also at the average age of about 30 to 35, I think. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this is also pretty young. The end is, mm -hmm. end is 35, yeah. Well, I think usually they are not very attractive because many of these people go there and they already plan like a career in politics. And it's not, I don't know, it never was like my thing for sure. And also what we kind of see is if we look at this... Um, Young Union or the Young Union or the other uh, users, they are a bit more extreme than the uh, old parties and uh, the old members. Yeah, because when you are young, you are still optimistic and idealistic, and then you learn that not everything works out because politics is compromise. Then you have to make more, go more to the softer part. But um, I think in, in, in general, um, the, the, yeah, the young people can be active and can share opinions. And that's already quite good. Yeah, I mean, this is these and this is, that's what they are for. Yeah, but but let's, let's make a very simple question. You asked if we would have joined the same party. I would have joined the same party my father was in. So because when I was 18, I the only political opinion I had was against or in favor of what my party, my, my family or my father decided. So normally you are in with your family and you follow this rules. And um, I'm from a let's say more traditional conservative area of Germany where, where there's just one party, at least it feels like there's just one party. And um, so, I, yeah, when you are young, maybe you don't even see possibilities because you just follow what your parents do, what your family does, what in your city is normal. Okay. But that's why you may, maybe most likely need more time to really have a strong opinion and to convince people later. Hmm. I don't know if I would be 18 now and I would be very political. Yeah, but you were. I probably I wasn't. No, yeah. not at all. With 18, I didn't want to join a party. Parties are uncool. <laughs> Anyways, if I would be 18 now, I would definitely go in the same direction. But <coughs> I would not say exactly. You, you would, would have gone to a different direction when you go. <laughs> no, I don't. Hello there. <laughs> Are you part of any party? No, I'm not. Okay. 
<laughs> so, so this is the question if you would be in the same fight like 18 year out. Yeah. If you would, would yes. you? Are you considering, you don't have to tell which one, or are you considering uh, uh, to be member of a party? I thought about it, but I guess it's, <clears throat> it's yeah. I'm already so stressed with my studies and work, and it would be just too much. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if I ask, okay, but you can make a sign or a kind of support just to be part of a party, for example, because the decision from the board of a party is given to the membership to say, okay, we will make decisions. And you just need maybe some hours a year to say, okay, yes or no, I like this or this, to make a kind of uh, voting inside the party and to strengthen that party. Mm, I didn't get the idea. Well, what so just, just to support... Uh, uh, I mean, by joining a party, joining a party yeah. just by joining a party shows support, and Great. strengthen the voice of the people that make decisions because when they can when they speak for a lot of members that work for yeah. Just give me an example. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but if there is one person more or less uh, voting, that doesn't that's change voting. It much. I, no, not what, joining a party because yeah. it's a totally different level of support than just voting for a party because you make a decision like I strengthen the party by increasing the number. For example, to say, I support the Green Party because the most topics which are interesting for me in my life are at the Green Statements. So you just join the party to support yeah, that's your what, ideas. That's what 90% of the members of political parties do. And they yeah, use... 90%? No. Most members yes. never show up anywhere. And so they use their tools to give response to the ideas, to say yes or no. And um, this, I think this is also a possibility to show up your, your support because you see that there were uh, a lot of people um, going to the social democrats, to the parties this, uh, the last year because there were so much um, um, things happening in politics, but I think only the 5 to 10 percent were showing up at the meetings because yeah, they just want to show up that they, they, they need this. Yeah, just to, to, to give you an example about my political group. We have like 260 or 270 members and are one of the biggest local groups of a political party existing in Northern Australia. And uh, on the General Assembly, where we vote for the delegates for some stuff, there were like maybe 30, 35 people. So, yeah, about 10%, a little bit more maybe, but that's all. And that's normal because... Um, Political parties, something a lot of people get, yeah, became member to support them. They pay a little fee, but it's not so much normally. And they just stay there for their whole life to support the party, but they don't want to influence the decision making because for them it's okay, all the others do it. And they don't want to it's it's like being, <coughs> no, but it's being a in a church, I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but in a church, you, have, you, you are sometimes without um, yeah, your own decision. In a bullet about you are never without your own decision. So you're referring to the God Chancellor? What does it mean you're not without your own decision? In you can be in a religious group because your parents decide when you are born. Ah. But you cannot be in a political party because your parents decide. Well, but you said you follow the lead of your parents. Yeah, you you should follow them by your very big decision. Yes, and it's, I didn't so it's not way. completely the and same, same but follow. it's very, very similar. But that, that, that is the big uh, thing. Normally, in the age of 13, a lot of people went out from the church, but they don't went into party. <laughs> True. So, um, I found a nice statistic, which uh, you might find interesting because you tend to travel a lot, or so I heard, ta-da. So, um, yeah, so... 670,000 people were asked how do you think your future will be compared to your parents and now if you imagine Europe how do you think this map looks like positive negative is it the same or which 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 age is it asked probably it's all the age probably all not ages. the same so basically um 
Germany is like uh, it will be the same. All West and North are saying it's gonna be worse than our parents, <laughs> while all the East, uh, from Poland, East Central, however you want to call it, Poland, Czech, uh, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Turkey, Russia, Ukraine is not on this map, like not asked. They say it's gonna get better. And now, what's interesting? Um, I they know what about Greece. Greece was uh, pessimistic. They they think it's gonna get a bit worse than their parents. What's maybe what Spain? And it's gonna get better. What? what is interesting is that they asked, uh, "How do you think your kids' life will look like?" And that's different. And then uh, the East is again is gonna get better, and then the West is gonna be, uh, it's gonna get worse. Even Germany. So, <laughs> is this a f like lack of? Um, trust in yourself like no. are we generation not generation X are we generation zero because we can achieve nothing for we, each other you talk about Germany now for us it's no. ridiculous no, no, for Germany it's people cool. think that it's gonna look worse no, you, it's your question about Germany or all of it you can discuss if you think that it's well, normal I, I, that I actually is. like I like this uh, statistic because it shows you It depends very much how where you come from. That in Germany we had a great life in in Western Germany we had a great life in the 90s and before every, everybody heard about it. It's it's like a common it's a very common topic or it's a common history that we were so great we lived so good in the West and in the East they lived so shitty and blah blah and now now you look at Eastern Europe and their parents probably lived. Shitty, as far as we heard or we hear a lot, and then of course it will get better. I mean, of course it will get better. It doesn't mean that they have the same living standard. We are just uh, sitting on a very high horse, no, and it doesn't change our mind. There's also really thing that I never understand. People always think that everything gets, yeah, that the history was better. The people in the 90s, when well, I remember what my parents said, yeah, one car, they had a second car because my mother had to go to work. We had one vacation every two years in the beginning. People have much more nowadays. It's just that you don't feel it anymore because it's, you think it's standard. So over the average <coughs> now is still, with all the problems we have in Germany, with a lot of unfair working conditions, is still unbelievably much better than 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I, think I agree with it. In the Western, this is what the statistics shows. Because the Western European countries, who are actually the founders, who are inside the uh, European Union for 60 years, uh, for 70 years in peace now, this is, as Kai said, a standard. They don't see what they achieved. They don't see that we have not only peace, we have a very good organized uh, economic market and everything, also social standards, and they're so standard that you don't see it. And the, for example, new members like Poland, Czech Republic, uh, Hungary, and whatever, they see all the opportunities and chances, and they see what is possible with the European Union. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Why, why do they see that? Because they look at Germany, they look at France, and they see, oh, fuck, this is how it could be. No, no, and then they that. see, oh, they see every couple of years a new highway, and a new this and What's that. What's take part of this, rich The income in a, in a lot of countries, for example, Slovakia is a country we know quite well. Um, in Slovakia, the average income increased in the last 10 years, like... 50%. Yeah? Yeah, we can check the number of details, maybe in the background, but the, it, the salary increased a lot, the average. That doesn't reach everybody. A lot of the like, old people in Eastern Slovakia, the people that are unemployed, they have still the same or similar problems as they had before. But the average income increase, it does not only the millionaires, what sometimes people say, it's just that the normal, in the west of Slovakia, normal worker in car industry and work, in, yeah, in, in working industries, Just earn small because there are enough jobs. <coughs> and this is something that, that we don't feel when they are not part of it. Is there any connections, maybe, to the reasons, for example? That's why I asked about the age, because I would, I would have expected that old people in Eastern Europe or Central Europe still would say, um, 
No, it's not that old. Because I hear voices from people, and when I travel sometimes from old people, say, hey, in communism everything was better. We all had a job, everything was fine. So because they already, they, they, they feel that they have no possibility to take part of the increasing economy because they are yeah, lost, maybe because of languages or whatever, they cannot take part of this Europe and Richmond. But the young people can take part because they are really good jobs. I think they, they, they can also take part, but I think if you're more older or experienced, you say, I don't want to make this because maybe you have your house, maybe you have your, your arrangement and you say, okay, I don't want to do that. What we, we would do, we would say, okay, we can just move, we can go there and there because we don't have that family or whatever. Yeah, sure. Hmm? Well, I can give you some statistics. Um, they're not directly related to this, but might be interesting. Um, almost everyone except Dutch, Belgian, Austrian and Swiss people say their parents are worried about their future. And then um, most people say their financial situation is okay, so they're not actually that much worried. Um, but then most people, except of Denmark, say there's too many taxes and at the same time say it's not fair, like, there's... The system is that's such a stupid thing. So people, should, people should stop talking about taxes and really comparing what they get out at the end, yeah? Like, so the whole idea is so stupid that we talk about taxes, because if you live, in, yeah, especially in Northern Europe, you live in countries, taxes are fucking high, but you still have a much higher netto income in the end than, than people here. Because that's what counts, what you have in your wallet, right? Like, and what you can buy from it. And I don't understand what the taxes are related to. If the, the taxes are based on the, the country where they're living, and at least, for example, in Germany, we have nearly 50% in, in, in the high level, um, which are going to the, to the state. We have, we have all. And, but there's just one euro per month we are paying for the European Union. So, what's too high? I think I would pay five. Yeah, but but not, uh, this is this is if you talk about taxes, it's just what do you get from no, this? What we have a big safety. We have yeah, nobody no. needs to to live under a bridge. Yeah, take me. But the ta taxes is some uh, is a something people feel to. But why? Why? I think this the statistic that he just said is basically the opposite of the one before, right? No, no, so, no, no, no. This, this one said Germany people are worried about the, fu the future of their children, and the other one said um, the other one not pessimistic about our future. No, it was the same. The, the people themselves they say um, in the West they gonna be worse off than their parents. In the East they say they're gonna be better off than their parents. And the parents say the kids, but the all the parents are worried. So okay. probably it's just the worried. parents are worried is nothing new. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to find some... But I think it's kind of logical. If you open the, the European Union to Eastern and Central Europe, it means that at some point it's, it shows that we are... it gets balanced, that we get equal. But actually... The, yeah. And that's a nice thing. Yeah, of course. I was, before they were stealing cars in Germany, now they do it by work. But actually about... <laughs> it, what you, it's so nice, I think... When we, when we speak about this tax, you say, okay, the tax for people that have a high income is 50%, but that's not true. It's just the tax for working people that um, are really rich is 50%. If you just have income from, from, uh, yeah, from shares or from uh, business trading, so like financial products, then you just pay 25%. So we, we is really rich people still trade, pay maximum 25%. It's so. depending on, 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 on the tax and where you live, on what is paid, because some people... But also what you get is... If you have social benefits, benefits, they call it taxes, what is wrong, which is wrong. But basically, the richer you are, what they do is they move to another country and pay less taxes. No, no, they don't do... You have if you are rich enough, you have the possibilities to save the taxes, and that's the unfair, inherent thing so. that we have in every system, it doesn't matter which country. <laughs> because and what only you should do is uh, make it more equal and fight the tax evasion. <coughs> Simple. You could say the people who are, this is, to, to come back to the, to the youth part of it, I think young people don't see how they can, can, can have an impact on that. Because I think the younger generation, there's another point of view towards 
Uh, cars, for example, to have uh, uh, talk, no? social benefits, for example, uh, is not social, to have uh, uh, values, they're, they're different, Maybe valuable goods, like, like cars. They don't need cars, they want good cars uh, and they have a good transport system, for example, because they want to share cars. I think not all of them, uh, but yes, but more than their parents, for example. Might be, That's might more. be. But basically, okay. I also awesome. would like to see that it's more or less the same in in Germany, in Poland, in France, so that it's, it's kind of equal, so we don't have to complain about the others, and so on. And finally, if you don't like it, that's great about your opinion, if you think it's unfair in your country, just go to another one. Freedom of movement. So, question. Um, you, If you like it, like, why complain, so... Why, like, all of us are in a youth organization trying to fight for something better, trying to fight for youth rights uh, in some way? Like, is it really that bad that we need to strive, or are we just oversaturated, or um, is it never enough to progress? But aren't we working? At least I am working on motivating people to get active. That's what I do in a youth organization. But you were active yourself. Yeah, but I was active, and I motivate people to get active. I never fight for the older people have to strengthen the young people. I, have, I always say the young people have to strengthen themselves by getting active, by, in, in, uh, by invest time and power to, to raise their voice and... No, of course, but this people. is what I meant. Like, um, if everything is quite good and we got so much and voting at 16 doesn't make such a difference and no, but I mean, why do we still try to change things? I think we still we are, we are we are a different generation. Like my parents, they don't didn't travel Europe when they were young. They, they, I mean, it started even before my generation, but it's a slow process. And I expected they were the pioneers. No, mine no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coming up, uh, growing up into such an organization or any and travel and travel and travel and meet different people from different countries. It didn't happen in this scale before, and so. It, I mean, it's it's not a political reason that I wanted to continue. It's just the way things develop. And yeah, yeah. okay. By the way, I also wanted. And to actually, continue. we have to show people possibilities and better opportunities. Because when you are when you live in your like village where your parents and grandparents live, maybe you think this is perfect. But there's always the possibility to do stuff better. The world is always open for opportunities. You so, can always get better. So I think this is a good part for, for the for the last round or uh, the last minutes of uh, of this because m my thesis is that there is a big difference in the not in the education level but where you are uh, based if you have a universal degree or not. That don't mean that the people who don't have a universal degree <coughs> but I think, for example, we have the Erasmus program, for example. I think when I look at statistics and on the on the impact of the people, they mostly have a background from university. Yeah, but how, how do we, do we could get the yeah, people for Erasmus program is not only for students. I, I know, that's what I mean. How, I, how could we... I do a, like, what, what is the word for normal education in Germany? Vocation? Vocation. I'm not completely sure. Philip checked that. Philip checks the English word for it. And um, I could do Erasmus. The problem is that in this, like, working, the combination of working school system that we have in Germany, it's a little bit more effort, and you cannot go for half a year. It's not only Erasmus, because it's growing, and yes, 10 years ago, there was Erasmus only possible, and I uh, well known for, for students, but it's, it's, it's growing for, for non-students. But I think there's also a problem, if you see at the, at the parliament, for example, at the, um, at the positions, whatever, I think... But the feeling is about 90 You are not an academic, I'm not an academic. Not we, both are maybe the, we both are maybe the most yeah. European optimistic people I know, so it's not a problem about education, it's about what you do out of it. Yeah. I always complain about the other so How can you motivate the people like... like I think it's put them in a fucking plane and fly them yeah. to port of Lazarus. He's, he's, he's right, he's right. We have to do, give it by example, 
because it's, no, it's about the culture we have in our education system in our country. When I was in school, I didn't have a pen pal in USA. There were like three students who had, and five students went to Australia and USA and so on. And these people, of course, came from richer families, probably, and of course, they probably went to university and they probably have a good education by now, and they have probably a good job. But if it's part of our culture, even in Realschule, in the lower schools, to send people for half a year or one year away, and if they wouldn't have to worry about money and the parents wouldn't have to worry about money, that would not even be an issue. That's right. Probably. And anyways, this travel culture will change because we have a travel culture and it will, it will spread, I'm sure. It's not just only really travel, it should be exchange, for example. Yeah, not only the, the young people, also, also, for example, teachers, for but example. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. lots of teachers. Or people uh, like in, in, in the, the administration of companies and in the state, for but example. It's easier for young people. If people already start traveling when they're young, they will try to travel. And, and anyways, I, let's make <coughs> Here, I don't mean tourism or some shit going to Mallorca to get fucking drunk. Uh, not only. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean like, one. You are do, do hitchhiking, do go to festivals, some experience, some sporting go events, hiking, mine. whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's not this this kind of tourism we already have. Uh, that's not the best thing to exchange uh, culture. And yeah, but but still, system. the main. Yeah, okay. He's totally right, yeah, what you said is totally right. We have to get people that are maybe not in a gymnasium or in a normal school, they are school, they are school. We are not to get them out. Secondary school. Sec yeah, and, and we, 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 we should really take care about that. And we should make it totally independent from money. Because I, for example, was not away from Germany during school because I couldn't afford it. Yeah? And uh, during university I worked myself, so I couldn't afford it really without a lot of effort. Because you, you don't get covered the full cost, but especially for people with low income, we have to cover those fucking costs. I say it too often. Shitty words, sorry. But it's fucking right. In Poland, they have this huge hitchhiking culture. People we know they came from Poland hitchhiking to Aachen, which is quite cool. And Anyways, in Germany we don't really have a hitchhiking culture. That's also the same. Yeah, we like yeah, safety and, and schedules. Yeah, but we, we don't need yeah, it's so not German. Do it. like, let's let's go back to like, like IJ Cologne. They, make, uh, they made a hitchhiking weekend. We could do that. We could do that, but we, could do that, but we are still movie. scared. <laughs> I would okay. Let's call it scary movie. <laughs> so scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> Many, um, like, when you talk to older people, they say the world is not the same anymore, it's not as safe anymore, like, hitchhiking, no, 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 those times are over. Well, I actually figure more people that I know hitchhike now than five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that the media, so, because we have this faster media and you, you see way more headlines, but you read way less articles probably, is making people more scared and making our parents more scared of things and why do we not care so much? Do we, are we too adventurous or? It's so, it's so cheap to, to take a car or a plane for example and it doesn't make sense. Huh? Some years ago flying was so expensive, train was very expensive and hitchhiking was the cheapest and most eventual way. So this is, I think, a big difference because traveling is so cheap and easy and if you listen to people who made hitchhiking or were the first pioneers traveling by train through Europe, it was much more uh, of, of Adventure. adventuring and, and uh, planning and whatever. If you want to go to Poland by hitchhiking, why? You can take a plane for 20 euros from Brussels to China from it. It's so easy. But it's okay, really if you have a, a big fare. <laughs> But it's free when you hitchhike and you get to know mm. people. And it's what not cost to ten hours of your life. And it's one much easier to fly for twelve euros. And on the highway is more dangerous than getting attacked in Europe by a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> no, most likely you get you get you get you, get, you, get, you, you have tried to be killed by a terrorist. To the yeah. I'm driving on the highway every fucking day and it's about one hundred twenty to one hundred forty kilometers every day. And you didn't manage to get but what's about there is more this? It's not about the media. That's also an interesting topic, even if it's really like a little bit not so. But um, in media, when I was at school, we had a, when we talk about media in school, we were reading uh, 
Süddeutsche Zeitung, mal some kind of Frankfurter Allgemeine, we were reading newspapers, big newspapers, and discussing these newspapers. So, um, what you said, that nowadays the media is faster, I think that people are maybe partly not prepared to that, because they never learn how to handle it. I, I think, okay, we, of course it's getting faster, but if you look <coughs> 100 years ago, this was fast for some people because newspapers, telegraphs, whatever, were getting new in their lives. And 100 years more plus, that was the same. Yeah, and so five minutes I later, think, it's Twitter. So I think if you look on the media, even if it's fast or not, I think there is no voice for young people. It's always the same people. Politicians, or maybe columnists, But who, who, is, who is representing the youth? Isn't our generation nowadays not, not a little bit more connected? Maybe like mediation between the old and the young people? Yes, but they're not raising their voice at that point. They're on Instagram making videos. They're raising or whatever. the voice nowadays. So now you have, let's say, a million voices in Germany um, that try to be heard on Instagram, on Medium, on whatever platform, while Back like 50 years ago, you had 10, 20, 30, let's say 100 newspapers. So the voice of each newspaper is bigger, but also it's, yeah, it doesn't That's represent so single opinions. Uh, do you think it's now better or should we? It's well, much more different. There, there's a big, yeah, there's a big, big difference because now a single person making a YouTube video can be heard, and uh, 20 years ago that was not possible. So it's a huge difference, and in that way, uh, in earlier times, the youth, what was not heard so much. And now, actually, I see a lot of clickbait and a lot of bullshit. Um, but, and I don't know, wait, 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 one example. You know, Tino Jung, here, Jung and Naive. Yeah. Yes, he's a young guy, he's a reporter, he does uh, really cool political stuff, videos, and spreads it to people. Especially Anka. Yeah, yeah, that's one example, for example, yeah, but where it works. I would I'd like to add, because He is making great videos and he's uncut. We have a press conference or interview which is about one hour. And I think this is another problem. There are only a few people taking the time to inform themselves. That's it's true. not depending on the age. That's true, not even I yeah, have you know, no, this is important. But problem. for for 60 years, one of the biggest <coughs> opinion makers in Germany is the Bild Zeitung. And the Bild Zeitung never had any like You mean the big host? Or fake news? Germany? Yeah, so, you know, it's a whole newspaper and there is just nonsense in it. They don't, they don't have any, like, sources normally. They just repeat lies and they write in the next time, oh, we had a lie, sorry, it was a mistake. So this newspaper that was already made, like, from one guy on YouTube, because it's really, like, just connect some shit. I, maybe, you know, Bento offline. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is... They were all they were always shitty news. We were maybe lucky that there were also some good news, but they are how, how do you find shitty news? What is shitty? Shitty news is somebody that can, telling you lies to raise his power. Not only lies. Maybe let, let's say for example a nice example always is, is from me Berlusconi and his media oh, empire or in Italy. Also really shitty is news that are not news that are actually advertisement or something. Oh yes, shit. Like the news. ten biggest Ooh. shit of and shit. I, and, I don't, and I don't like if it's it's like it's it's not fake, but it's um unimportant. It's, it's, no, like for example yeah. if they say the refugees of four or five refugees Uh, failed in their uh, German, <coughs> German, German uh, language test. But the truth is that it was uh, a higher level and there were one who passed the main level and four get the basic level. I mean, people who are actually angry about this should try to learn Arabic. It's fucking hard. I wouldn't <laughs> pass. I wouldn't pass. I think we, we, we have to come to an end now. So maybe... Uh, Okay, final statement. Ah, yes, there's a question. Yay! Where's the question from? Who is that guy questioning us? It's my turn. So, um, uh, comment from Elitsa from Bulgaria. Traveling, mobility, or the EU term. Free movement is what makes people closer to the EU. And probably is one of the reasons why the East is so optimistic about the future. Because we are very pessimistic in general, but having the chance to go and work wherever is makes you being positive. Also, the whole Erasmus Plus program is what makes young people 
feeling more as EU citizens than their parents or grandparents. One question. Was it from Bulgaria? Yes. Yeah. But wait, really, wait, what? When Bulgaria is the new host of the European uh, presidential ship. So, Shit. greetings to Bulgaria, who are uh, for six yeah. months the um, head of uh, presidency. And just one fun thing, by the way. Normally it should be Great Britain, but because they want to exit, Bulgaria is first. <laughs> <laughs> Bulgaria first. Goodbye. So wait, but that was not a question. Was it a question? No, no, it was a. It but was I really a... like the statement. She's the right. statement is awesome, and that's what we said before. I think we had this point all already. We drink the last travel travel in Bulgaria. Travel experience Europe. Make no, friends in Bulgaria. Nastravi. No? Nastravi. 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 You know, we can also make many other EU countries, but we we'll save it for the next time. Suggestions for the next topic. topic. Topics, and we try to improve that because next time we maybe add some Skype conversation so we can put you uh, in the line. Life in the conversation. Or, yes, put you through. Or we come to another part of Europe. Or you can make this on yourself and post it on our Europe channel. I think that's it. One hour is enough of German guys talking bad English. <laughs> <laughs> It's not bad English, it's just German English. <laughs> so guys, have a nice weekend. Have a nice three and, uh, three. and give us a like. And wherever you go, experience it. Yeah. Please Good. subscribe. <laughs> Goodbye.